Okay, I see people joining us, so welcome. Hello everyone. Uh, we are very excited to be here with you again for the fifth Lego Brave Bricks webinar. I can see and hear people joining us. So I am Marie and this is Mark and Hello. we are um, both Braille consultant for the Lego Foundation. Uh, we are uh, here for a hands-on webinar today uh, which is called um, Manipulation and it is about pre-Braille activities. So I hope you are ready to play with us. I can see a lot of people joining us. Uh, where are you from? Texas, USA, you can see. Mexico City. Hello. Quebec in France. Bonjour. UK. Uh, yeah, that's nice to see many countries. Brussels also, North Wales. It's like if we are traveling. Yeah, and Scotland, <laughs> Edinburgh. Great. Um, for this webinar today, just a, a quick reminder to tell you that you need bricks. Uh, maybe not all of you have Lego Braille bricks. So you just pick classic bricks, or Duplo, Lego, whatever you want, and it's fine. It will be great. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed the previous webinars. Uh, just to let you know that if you were not able to attend to them, or you can watch them on our YouTube channel, at least the three first of them. Uh, we are adding them as soon as it is possible and we've downloaded them. So we have a YouTube channel called Lego Braille Bricks and you also go, can go on the website, the legobrailbricks.com website and you, you can click on the facilitation section and then you have a card at the bottom with a um, webinar replay. So you just go there and you have a direct access to YouTube to watch everything. So now, Today, today is uh, a 45 minute session, Mark. Mm -hmm. During that time, we will play, uh, we will perform two activities with you if you are ready. This session will be recorded too, so it will be on YouTube. Uh, and feel free to, to add everything you need on the chat. And just to let you know that at the end of it, we will stay for 15 minutes uh, to share comments with you, to answer questions, or just to, to discuss of what happened today. Um, yeah, whatever it takes. So uh, I think it can be time to play and have a look at the first activities. Um, just to let you know where you can find all the activities. So here you are on the website and you click on activities, that's just a way to find them. And then we have, as we already said, 90 activities uh, among pre-Braille group and Braille activities. So for us, pre-Braille, it's everything uh, that deals with uh, early literacy, early Braille, prerequisite to Braille, everything you need to, to know and learn uh, before you can go to Braille activities and to learn the Braille characters, assemble them and, and perform literacy and numeracy activities. So uh, really pre-Braille activities, it goes to, uh, to the knowledge of the pattern of the Braille cells. So for the pre-Braille activity group, we have three categories, manipulation, orientation and constellation. And in the Braille activity groups, uh, we also have three categories, character, literacy, and numeracy. That's why uh, this week we're going to have three webinars about the three groups of uh, pre-Braille and next week three other about Braille activities. So, um, we have, as I said, manipulation. Also, we're going to see it today. Also, orientation. It's going to be tomorrow and it's going to be activities about how to orientate the brick, position it and so on. And on Thursday, we're going to have constellation. Uh, what is constellation? It's everything you need to know uh, to have a full understanding of the pattern of the braille cell. So it's a poetic name to just uh, tell that we're going to play with the dots in the braille cell and to learn how it is they are arranged. So today it is manipulation 
and it is um, here to discover and get used to the bricks, learn how to use them, to assemble them on the base plate, to play with them. So it's about uh, fine motor skills, about manipulation, about um, exploring, uh, about tactile skills and a lot of things like that. So we have in the manipulation section um, 15 activities so far. You, if you click on it, you're going to see all of them. Uh, first, you have small cards with um, a drawing and then a short explanation of what is it. For example, treasure hunt, you know that it is a search the beach for bread bricks in a bin full of rice. So it's really important to, to work with exploration, tactile exploration. You go deep with your hands in the sun or, or rice and try to look for a brick. Separate the bricks. It's a really simple activity just to explain the kids how to um, separate bricks. Sometimes we have also frozen penguins. Sometimes it can be difficult for very young um, blind kids to just manipulate Lego. They don't have a lot of experience with it or maybe they can have fine motor skills problem. Uh, so you see a lot of activities and I think I talk too much so maybe we can start right now with the first one uh, we've um, prepared called Save the Turtle. So Maybe I'm going to share the stage with you, Mark, and let you play with us and save turtles. Yeah, and see children playing also. Yes. That's always interesting. Yeah, so <clears throat> this, uh, the, the activity is called Save the Turtles. And um, just for you who cannot see the screen is identify tactile characteristic of bricks and control motor skill while placing the turtle back on their feet. So it's a pre-brain manipulation activity. And um, first of all, we are going to watch a little video of the preparation of the activity. And uh, while you are going to watch the video, you can also prepare the bricks needed to make uh, the activity because you will be performing at what time the activity yourself. And Marie, you will do it too. So just before we have a look at this short video, um, is to know that uh, to prepare the activity, something that is very important, you can prepare it um, if you are at home, for example, when you prepare your, what you are going to do with the students. And uh, we know that some of the teachers have prepared little boxes in which they put the, 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 the bricks that are necessary for the activity, the base plate, and even they have printed the the activity sheet so that they can easily go to schools and get ready you know just uh, one minute for the activity to be done okay. but we also know that uh, sometimes boxes uh, toolkits are at school and itinerant teachers uh, have to go from one school to another and they cannot prepare things mm. uh, beforehand and that's not a problem because you can prepare the activity while you arrive at school and in what we are going to see here is uh, Marie will prepare the activity directly with the child. They are collaborating uh, each other to prepare the activity. So maybe we can have a look at this first video and remember uh, to prepare at the same time the bricks needed. And you can use classic bricks if you don't have Lego Braille bricks. <laughs> For this activity, you can see that Mary leads, of course, the activity because it's a very young child, he's only four years old and is totally blind and is uh, making activities with Lego Braille Brick for the first time. We have asked uh, his parents uh, to help us and to make a, a film about that, but it was, he was discovering at the same time the bricks. But, um, and he practiced very well, but of course he, won't, he wasn't able to count until 10 because you have to have 10 bricks to practice this activity. So that's why, of course, they are collaborating. Mary is helping him. And also, I don't know if you have noticed, but that's why I wasn't speaking um, directly on the video. 
um, but the bricks are quite noisy and that's something that is really usually interests a lot of the, the blind, the little blind students. Mm. And especially we have also um, made activities with one uh, young boy who is totally blind and have uh, big autism uh, issues. And he loved listening to the bricks and moving them and like, like uh, moving in the sand, but with the bricks. And that was very, really amazing to see. And um, so maybe now that we have seen that, we, I propose that we are going to see um, Juan making the activity. And we will explain and the next activity will have subtitles so you will be able to understand even if uh, everybody speaks French on the video, uh, the subtitle will be in English. And then afterwards, we'll make some comments. D'accord, pas d'accès une torture. Et on imagine que la tortue, pour la sauver, il faut la mettre à l'endroit avec la carapace tout en haut, comme ça. Si elle est comme ça, elle est sauvée. Si elle est à l'envers, elle risque d'être très malade, voire même de mourir, parce qu'elle ne sait pas se remettre à l'endroit. Tu peux la remettre à l'endroit. Sauvée Tu la mets à l'envers, la tortue, sur la table. Tu fais voir Ah, là, enlève tes doigts que je la vois bien. Ah oui, elle est à l'envers. Tu la mets à l'endroit Oui, d'accord. Elle est à l'endroit. Elle est comment Elle est Là, elle est à l'endroit. Elle est sauvée. Elle est sauvée. Super. Sauvée. Sauvée. Papa, voilà. Okay, so um, just a few comments that we can um, make on this video. And uh, the first one is that what you can see on the picture, and that's very important, is that uh, Jean is using the ball. Uh, to um, where the, the bricks were placed to see that the activity is over. And that's usually why we like to put the bricks in bowls so that the child can do the activity by themselves and not, uh, so that they notice easily mm -hmm. that the activity is over. And he was uh, spontaneously uh, doing that and he understood very quickly that it means uh, he loved to put the, uh, the whole hands in the bowl so that it means that the activity was over. The second uh, thing that is important, I don't know if you've noticed, but at the beginning, uh, when uh, Mary is, is explaining the activity to Jean, um, they, t they are talking about the brick, and she said, are you okay to say that it is a turtle? And that's something that's very important because um, for those of you who have seen the previous webinars about learning through play, you know that one of the five characteristics of learning through play is uh, that the activity have to be meaningful so that they can, uh, the children can uh, understand that um, what is the meaning, what is the story about. And uh, that's very important that, of course, the child agrees on what is the activity about and is not going to play with bricks, but is really going to save the turtle. And that leads us to the second point that is um, uh, a few times he saved, saved at each time he saved a turtle and it was not just the fact of turning upside down the bricks he, he was really he was really living the activity and saving really the turtles and uh, of course he was very he, he, we can feel emotion in that and it was a joyful activity so um, that was the two points, the two important things about uh, the characteristic of learning through play. And then uh, one other point is that um, at one moment, Mary asked uh, Jean if uh, he can put his hand out of the bricks so that she can see what is on the brick. And that's something that is very important for all kinds of activities um, because um, Remember that these activities, that Lego, those Lego bricks are made for blind students, of course, to learn Braille, but also they have to play the activities with sighted peers. And 
uh, each other have to know how to work with the, the other one. So that means the blind child has to have in mind uh, what uh, what is needed for the sighted peer to make the activity. So he had, it has to see what is on the bricks. So if you stay with your hands all the time on the bricks, nobody would be able to see anything. So that if, uh, if nobody tells you uh, as a blind child, you cannot imagine that. And uh, on the other side, if you are a sighted peer, you have to notice that it can take more times for the blind students to see where are the bricks, where are they placed on the base plate, uh, and to feel the studs on the bricks to identify the number of studs or stuff like that. So they really have to collaborate and to know each other better so that they can really collaborate easily. So now what I suggest, uh, if uh, for those of you who have prepared the necessary bricks, so I will Hello, you want, uh, we can take 30 minutes to prepare the bricks. So Mary, you can do the activity. Maybe we can, we, we can stop sharing the, the screen yes. so that we can see us. Okay. So you, uh, I don't know why it's not us in the middle, but that's not a problem. Uh, okay, so, so I have one ball. Yeah, and you need to place 10 bricks in okay. the ball. And remember, at home, if you want to practice this activity, it can be classic bricks, even if it's not regular uh, Lego bricks, that's fine. 10. Okay, and then I will allow you, we can say, one minute to perform the activity so uh, it could be great if everybody at home that are willing to practice uh, close their eyes and uh, try to make this activity using remember both hands to okay. fill the studs and the holes that are under Sauve. in english save <laughs> how do you say in german Yeah, uh, yeah, and to answer the question, the shell is the, the part with the studs. Yeah. Yeah. Saved. Saved. I think that you have your, your, your eyes are closed, so you cannot see the chat, but I think you have your answer in uh, Geretet in German. I don't speak German, so <laughs> I cannot. Uh, that but thank you okay okay so of course feel free to share your comments your whatever you you want to share with us in directly in the chat and maybe uh, also during the the chat uh, the in the chat you can also uh, if you want to share your screen and to show us practicing the activity it can be this one or the next one you feel free to do that and mm. you, you will be able to share your, your screen. But we will also save time at the end. Yeah. So the next uh, part now, we are going to put again the, the slides because now we are going to see, to have a look at the, the activity sheet itself. Remember that on the website, you have the little cards describing the activities, and then when you click on those cards, it leads you directly to the, the whole sheet of activity. So, in fact, what we have done so far is all the first part of this activity. I'm not going to read it because you will take time to, to do that, but we are going to see the next steps. So, the, the next step is possible variation. So remember, it is to make the activity easier or more difficult. And one uh, idea here to make the activity easier, because um, it's really something that we have to have in mind. Uh, Juan, even if he is only four years old, is, we can say, a, a smart uh, guy. <laughs> and he was uh, um, having no trouble doing this activity directly with the Lego bricks. But we know that some of the child can have difficulties doing that. So we suggest to use either regular bricks so that they have more studs and they can then easily mm. uh, see the, feel the difference between the shell and the bottom of the turtle. 
And of course, if you use Duplo, it, it is, of course, um, uh, easier. So we are once again going to see a video, short video of uh, Jean playing with Duplo. Okay, and I don't know if you have noticed, but we we said that uh, Juan was very joyful doing the activity, but we can see also that Mary was very happy <laughs> to save the turtle with him. And that's usually, we can say that TVI are usually uh, very enthusiastic when they, they practice the activity with the child. So just uh, two comments about that. Um, of course, uh, as you can see on, on the picture, it's e much more easier to feel the difference between the studs and the holes that are beyond, that, that are um, uh, under the brick. And also one thing is that um, for, uh, if we take, uh, have a look at uh, Jean's hands, um, in both activity, while he was practicing with the Lego Braille bricks and with the Duplo, he used both hands. And one hand was the one that picked the bricks in the bowl. And the other one was the one, we can say, with the correct answer. Because he, he took the brick with one hand, identified which one is the, the correct position, to put the bricks in the correct position, and then place the Duplo bricks under one hand. And uh, he, he do, did that all the time to see where to put the, the correct answer with the bricks in the correct position and to do that very easily. And that's something that naturally came to him, but it's not that easy for everybody to use both hands, we can say. So that's why mm. when Mary was practicing the activity now, I, I, I told her, remember that you have to use both hands. Now we are going to... Not to see again the... <laughs> <laughs> the movie we are going to have a look at the end of the activity sheet is um, the the part about the skills remember that um, you we you will we have five different uh, type of uh, holistic skills but in this one we are focusing only on three different types and uh, what I like to say is that we can say that um, those five characteristics are like doors that we, uh, the child can open and to do the activity in, in a way or, or, or another. So here we have physical, emotional and cognitive. Uh, a thing that is important is that there are no ordered. Uh, a physical skill is not more important than an emotional one or a cognitive one. So. Uh, usually they are placed differently in each of the uh, different activities. So if we have a look at uh, physical, so of course here uh, in the manipulation activities, they are very important uh, physical to have physical skills. The first one is name special relationships, because in this activity, you have to know uh, that uh, you are working on the table. You have to take the bricks in the bowl. You have to put not to put the bricks upside down. So that's all um, important uh, special relationship that you have to have in mind. Also, another one is explore and discriminate to get information. And of course, we can say that it is the main one because if you're not able to touch and to feel the difference between the holes and the studs, you won't be able to make the activity. Then, uh, of course, I would say the activity had an emotional uh, characteristic. You have to control motor skills and emotional commitment to succeed in simple activities and to live really deeply the adventure of saving the turtle. And, and the last point is about the cognitive, so that's recognize, classify, and sort shapes in two dimension. And here, uh, that's what is important. It is in two dimensions because that's really the circle. The hole is a circle at the bottom of the brick instead of the bumped one that is uh, represented by the studs. And I think that's 
Uh, yeah, just no, a last word about, but I'm not going to read it. It's just for the did you know uh, section. Uh, just to remember you that in the did you know section, you will find information about how to teach to a braille, uh, braille, braille to a, ch a child or uh, have information about learning through play philosophy. We have one question about why didn't he use a base plate? Um, because in some activities in manipulation, we don't use ba base plate because um, we, we don't have age on the um, template. We don't say this activity is for four years old or five or six, but uh, we try to have some more difficult than the others. And it will be more difficult for him to place the bricks on the base plate and to attach them. So that's why. But that can be um, yeah, and uh, a possible I variation. And I see also in the the chat that someone yeah. suggests to use yeah. an anti slip sheet, yeah. and of course that's a We're great gonna idea. Talk about that in the next activity. So maybe we can just um, play another one. Yeah, I'm ready. And it is caterpillar to butterfly, and then we're gonna try to turn a caterpillar into a butterfly. And it's about uh, fine motor skills, again, and recognize special, uh, special relationships uh, with imagination and storytelling about the caterpillar. So, for this activity, you will need one base plate, 12 random bricks, and one ball. So now we have one base plate, uh, and you see it is a little bit more difficult than the other. Do we have to prepare now or do we have to wait? Yes, you can prepare now. Okay. That's a good idea. So <laughs> just take one base plate, 12 random bricks and one ball. 12, you said random bricks? Yes. So you will see in the video that I am preparing two sets for uh, two children. In fact, most of the activities in the manipulation section are for one child, but of course you can prepare several sets and have several kids performing the same activity at the same time, but just uh, closer to each other in the same room and that can be nice. And you will see that here we have a lot of interaction and social interaction uh, between the two children who will play, not together, but just uh, close to each other. Uh, yes, so are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, so you have to attach four bricks in a vertical position on the base plate in random location. So I just start the video like that you will see. So I take two balls, two base plate, then four bricks for one plate and four for the other. I especially, cho I've chosen uh, yellow bricks because uh, one of the children has some um, vision, color vision, so that will help him the contrast between the yellow and the base plate. So I don't, I try not to put yellow for the wings on the base plate. Okay, yeah, and as we, as someone suggested uh, in the chat before, yes, uh, it can be really great to have an anti-slip uh, um, sheet or mat or double-sided tape or um, adhesive putty, something to prevent the base plate to split on the table, to move. So I had, I didn't have any of that at that moment. So I just took a piece of Play-Doh, make a ball and I stuck it on the table and that worked for me. So that was just for uh, one boy because it was the youngest we saw uh, playing with Mark um, uh, previously, Jean, uh, and the o the other one is older and he he doesn't need that. Okay, so that's why it's just for one. Um, next, next video. Okay, before the video, just a picture. Yeah. That's what I suppose you have at home, Mark. No, by my my something overs bricks were yes. not. In the so bowl. just yeah, great i can see some on the picture <laughs> thank you so four bricks in random location but vertical position to figure caterpillar and the other bricks are on the ball so i think you are ready i just have a question because you have put only letter 
E? Is it on purpose or no? No. Okay. Not at all. It was just to have four yellow bricks, but okay. you can do. And and again, it was because I wanted to have a high contrast for this particular boy. I I know he can see yellow. Okay. So now to play. We have three steps. Uh, I'm not sure we're gonna perform the third one. It's a pity because I love it, but not sure we will have time. We'll see at the end, but um, first, all the let's play information, the sentences we have here in the let's play, you can tell them exactly like that to the, the children if you want. Uh, that's the only part in the template that are addressed to the kids. The other is for the teacher, the practitioner, but this one you can read them like that if you want. If uh, You can also use your own language or, or do whatever you want, but we try to, to make them, them accessible for the kids. So I can just tell Mark, for example, explore the base plate to find the four caterpillars. Then help them turn into butterflies by adding two wings from the board, one of on each side of their body. Go! And I hope that I'm not the only one to perform this activity. I hope, I hope. And I don't want to tell you too, too many things just to see what's happening now. And we'll have the video just after, so just leave you a few minutes. I can see three very nice butterflies next to me. Okay. One more One wing. more for Mark. Yes. Yep. Great. Good job. I made it. Can we uh, have a look at it? <laughs> That's nice. Oh, oh, oh yellow butterflies. Yeah, great. <laughs> Okay, so I'm um, sorry, but we, we don't have time for the imagine and tell the story of these caterpillars, what happened, what's happening now, but I'm sure you will find time to do that with your students and I hope you will share with us uh, what they told, what they, uh, yeah, they imagined and all kind of things that would be great to hear from them, more than you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you can tell us, but no. So here we are. So that is uh, Ta uh, Juan with me, uh, the little boy you saw uh, previously, and close to him it is Tao. He's a young boy, uh, um, age ten. Uh, he has glasses, but he's a braille reader and he can't see a lot of things. But the color, the yellow color. So. Just before we watch the video, I just wanted to explain why I am here. Um, Joan, as you, you saw, is very young. He's only four. He has just turned four this month, so very, very young. And that's why I stand close to him. I want him to, to go quicker in the activity because we had to do that to make the movie. Uh, if it will be in a real life situation and not for a shooting, I will let him uh, do more on his own and explore the base play. But I wanted him to go quickly. So I just stand um, behind him because I wanted to, him to feel the movement I can impulse to him with my arms. So you will see that uh, most of the time I don't take his hands or fingers, but just his forearms or uh, wrist. And I, I push, I, I help him to begin to start the movement and not take his hand to go from one place to another. And if I am in the same position as him, it's um, easier for him to, to feel that movement and that uh, impulsion, impulsion. So that's why. And of course, uh, he knows me uh, since he was born. So he's not a friend of me. Um, and he, I know he accepts that I touch and guide him a lot. So that's not a problem for him. Uh, yes. And Tao, he's a braille reader. So he doesn't need my help. He's been playing a lot with um, Lego. So just yeah maybe we're gonna watch stop talking and watch
Il faut venir mettre des ailes de chaque côté des chenilles. Leur mettre deux ailes aux chenilles. Avec les ailes qui sont là. Voilà, pour trouver une chenille là. Allez, mets-lui des ailes. Allez, là, la chenille elle est toute seule, il lui faut deux ailes. Je viens chercher les ailes. Voilà. La chenille et tu mets une autre là. C'est ça. Bravo. Bravo. I saw someone asking on the chat uh, about the position of the, the wing. So in purpose, I didn't tell you anything because I wanted to go straight to the facilitation tips. The first one, um, and just I'm going to read it. The child might find several ways to place the wings. And that's great. I think that's creativity. And that's one of our playful uh, characteristics that we want to encourage. And there is no wrong or right position for wings. And it's nice to see that we can have a lot of different butterflies. And that can be also um, the occasion to talk about it and to, to say, uh, how do you imagine that the, the, the wings are? Uh, why did you put it like that? And so on. So that's also um, a great moment of discussion. Um, and we can go straight to see Tao the oldest one, because uh, you will see that he tried several ways to make wings uh, and it's in French. So he says that he is not happy because he wanted to try to make a very nice butterfly and to add, to add the wings to attach the bricks in diagonal. But he won't be able to do that because you have just two solutions. So he's struggling with that and he's not very happy. But at the end, he says, OK. That's it. That's my butterfly. Oops. So he's not happy. He takes them off and try what he wants to do. And just to know that it can be um, a, good, a good occasion for us to discuss with him why it's not possible to place them in diagonal and why it's just horizontal or vertical uh, because of physical uh, properties of the base plate and of the bricks. So that's a good opportunity and he's older, but we can even work on um, skills for grown up uh, with a simple activity. Just another tips we have to, um, to take in consideration and that we loved, it's uh, to ask the child to mimic a butterfly and move their wings. So we did that and Tao said, but I can explain, Juan, what is a butterfly and how uh, it moved their wings. So uh, here again, we have a very, um, uh, very nice characteristic of playful experiences and it's uh, the social engagement uh, with it because you can see you will see that uh, they do that together and Tao will help uh, Juan understand how a caterpillar turns into a butterfly and what are the wings so je vais t'apprendre comment ça comment ça fait un papillon donc ça tu vois là c'est ton corps d'accord oui et ça c'est mon dos un papillon les bras c'est comme ça alors vas-y tiens les comme ça et maintenant tu les secoues comme ça voilà une naissance d'un petit papillon et ça c'est la chenille et le papillon il est comment il est comme ça il a des ailes qui poussent ouais. yeah. et la chenille mmh. la chenille Hop. et le papillon I think he is too cute. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. And it's just to know that um, 
it is not only just to be cute and funny that it is a caterpillar and a butterfly, but again, it is a playful characteristic, uh, a characteristic of playful experiences. It is that it's meaningful for him. Um, if you ask him just to put horizontal bricks close to a vertical brick, it's not very funny. But then uh, he understands. He, tr he begin to understand what it is and how is a butterfly and what we are talking about. So that's really more meaningful, I think, for him than just horizontal and vertical. Okay. Yeah, and just one word, because uh, in the explanation, Tao used the word, um, can you see that's your body? And even if the other one is totally blind, that's something that we mm. really think is important to notice. If you are not used to work with blind students, you don't have to avoid those kind of uh, verb to see. Um, yeah. They can see even if they cannot, we can say. Uh, one question of the, on the chat. Why didn't we start by uh, this tip? Uh, in fact, if, the, if Juan was struggling with the activity and if we think he, was, he will be struggling, we, will have, we would have started with that. But we know for sure, we knew for sure that he won't have any trouble. So we've just added at the end to show you. But of course, uh, the tips, the facilitation tips, most of the time you have to do them before to be sure that they, un they understand the concept and they know what they have to do. If they don't know, they, they won't feel joy. It won't be meaningful and it's pointless. Possible variation. You can just change the number of bricks or you can do as you suggested before with a turtle, you can use uh, Duplo bricks. So you make bigger, biggest uh, butterfly, or you can use several bricks for ma to make uh, giant wings, things like that. So it's... Uh, yeah, and we have suggestion in, in the chat also, you can change the story and you can yeah. use angel wings for Christmas, airplane wings for of course. travel topics. What, and Whatever it takes and yeah. whatever uh, makes the, it fun and enjoy the, the child. Uh, and then about the holistic skills. So here we have an example of activity with the five holistic skills, all um, one in each category. So creative, it's this one is about new spoken language to develop understanding. So we will talk a lot uh, during the third point, imagine and tell the story of the caterpillar. So that's a, a good opportunity to use language. Uh, the cognitive one, of course, it's recognized spatial relationship. That's a great one for a young one and also for the oldest. We have the emotional, uh, express many feelings and emotions uh, in a manner appropriate to cause. So we saw that too. We have a social aspect. It is uh, engage in game and pretend play activities. So I think here they were engaged in pretend play. And the last one, physical, was locate objects by touch. Of course, you work on many other skills. We had to make some choice here just to, to write five of them, but you can find a lot more. Um, and the last point is, did you know? Uh, we have here two, kind of, uh, two kinds of, did you know? One, the last one about playful experiences, so you can read it and we have, we try to add a lot of sentences explaining uh, learning for play and playful experiences. And the first one is about Braille. And it's just to say that um, for tactile reading, you need a good exploration skill. So uh, we need to work on tactile exploration of a page. Here it's not a page, it's a base page, but it's quite the same. So we can use it. Uh, to, to work on exploration and then it can be easy if they have experienced it, that kind of exploration, to search for the bricks uh, and then it makes it easy when you go to a braille page uh, with braille characters. One question easy to, to answer. Uh, it is from... Um, Woohoo! It, it's going too fast. So who created these games? Us. <laughs> That's why we yeah. know how to play, maybe, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to them. <laughs> so we've designed the 90 activities you can find on the website. Yeah, and it, uh, there was a question about a child that has uh, low vision and that he will need Braille, but uh, won't. Uh, mm. Of course, he's using his, hand, his eyes. 
Yeah, but that's a good opportunity to work on um, fine motor skills and tactile skills, even if you can look at it. And you can also organize a play under a cupboard with, uh, you know, some holes for your hands. And that can be a way to do. Uh, also, you have activities where you have to find the bricks inside a, a bag. Um, you can f try to find a... a a pouch, a bag, whatever you want, something, or just to cover your hands and look for bricks under under it without the, the help of the site. And you can play together like that, blindfolded or not, but just um, not looking at them. That can be nice also yeah. for everyone. And that's really what we like with the Lego Brand Bricks, that they are inclusive, so you can play even if you are sighted for once. That's nice, and you just have to try to not to look so not to look at them. So, as I said, in a, into a bag or under a table or under a big um, cupboard, and you cut holes for your hands and things yeah. like that. Yeah, and with those kind of children, also it can be a good opportunity to popularize braille so that they they are happy to learn braille and to to come with you and practice braille activities. And then you can uh, slowly go to regular Braille and it could be a, a good way so that they know the Braille mm. cell, where mm. are the dots, uh, how the dots are positioned to make mm. letters and, and numbers. So even if they use their, their eyes, that's mm. a, a good thing. Um, hi, I don't know if you hi. can hear me. Yes. Yes. Um, um, I, uh, in, in my school, I work with a, um, a student who's deaf blind. Okay. Um, he's got very um, limited functional vision on his right bottom corner. Um, and in considering that um, mouth is also, it plays a big role for him to explore. Um, I had quite, uh, quite a few sessions with him. Uh, using the Lego bricks, they're great, they're amazing, it's such a great opportunity. Um, is there any, because obviously the, 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 the student in your video was someone you could communicate to, you could just talk to, um, but that that's not the case um, with my students. So is there any activity that um, he would benefit more than others? But what I was going to say is, at the very beginning, what is uh, what you can do, uh, maybe that's what you have already, already done, but it's what uh, in the LEGO Foundation they call free play. And that's very important to just mm. uh, give the box and give the toolkit so that they can manipulate and do whatever they want with the bricks. So they can discover mm. and, and slowly you can uh, take two bricks and uh, clutch them together so that he will understand that th there is a clutch power with the bricks and that slowly they can we, discover. We have that activity in the manipulation uh, section, it's called free play. And we just tried to explain how uh, free play can be great and what kind of skills you work with free play and so on. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and definitely what, what is good uh, at the very be beginning is to start with the, the manipulation activity. Yeah, and what is really easier is to, to separate bricks. That's the first step, the, the easiest step. So we have um, an activity called separate the bricks where you just take two apart and then uh, when you've made several activities about how to separate them, uh, you can go to assemble them. It's more difficult to assemble than just to separate. And, and for, a, for a child, sometimes it's uh, meaningful and they understand what to do if you give them a, um, a base plate with bricks on it. Uh, and they just understand that they have to take them away of the base plate and put them on a ball. And of course, uh, as we already said, the bricks are fully compatible with all of uh, the Lego products. So if it's too difficult to have a big base plate like the one you have in the box, you can, re you can use a small one, a very small one with just a few bricks um, and stop like that with that. Yeah. And also we know that there are a lot of teachers are, that are working with blind deaf uh, students and um, they, they can share on the Facebook that also why the community mm. is important 
to to show what is possible to do what they have made and so that if everybody share we can say that step by step we can work with any kind of students so i hope it would help okay thank you what are we going to play tomorrow do you remember the name apple trees i think we're gonna plant some apple trees and find the crazy duck so thank you Thank you for joining us today and we hope to see you tomorrow. Yeah, so see you tomorrow. <laughs>